I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello horror hounds and welcome to my horror house. A couple of weeks ago one of you lovely YouTubers, Ray D, suggested that I might do a top five werewolf transformations. And I've been thinking about it ever since because it was a fantastic suggestion and rather than try and smush it into a five and rank them, I'd like to talk a little bit more loosely about what I think are some of the best werewolf transformations, some that are my favourites, compare and contrast a few of them. My tastes run more to uh, the practical effects end of the spectrum rather than CG. I don't think we've quite got to the point where 100% CG transformations have the heft and physicality required but I'll be giving some CG examples here so with thanks to Ray I want to kick off by talking about an underappreciated werewolf movie A Company of Wolves it's a Neil Jordan film and it's based on the short some of the short stories of Angela Carter it's a little bit of a portmanteau film lots of little short stories and an overarching story so there are lots of opportunities to have different kinds of werewolves and different kinds of werewolf transformations two transformations in a company of wolves which are most striking to me are the ones where the the beast literally has to rip out of the human or the human has to sort of tear themselves away from the beast that's within so you have the fantastic very striking image that's been uh, used quite a few times since of Stephen Ray literally tearing the skin off of his face and off of his body so that the wolf can uh, emerge and then later on the uh, the character of the man whose eyebrows meet in the middle um, writhing around in front of the fire getting more and more her suit until the wolf literally pushes its way out from inside it. Practical effects like this, even if it's just adding some layers of hair onto an actor's back while they're contorting and writhing in front of a fire, is something physical, something that's really there for an actor uh, to work with. I do think that once both of these transformations go 100% practical into the the puppetry element the effect is uh, lessened somewhat but I'm a strong believer that if you buy the human performance well enough you can transfer the emotions into the puppet by the final stage compare that to a similar transformation in the TV series Hemlock Grove which is all CG but again takes its cues, I think, from these transformations in A Company of Wolves. The skin has to be torn off, the beast has to literally burst out from inside the human. And you can see that um, it's much less visceral, at least to, to my mind. It doesn't have the weight and the heft to it, although I do love the touches of physicality that they've added with the human eyes coming out to be supplanted by the wolf eyes, the human teeth falling out, and especially at the very end, the wolf eating the human skin to reabsorb uh, the human during that part of their cycle of transformation. It's a really nice touch. Bad Moon is another, I feel, underappreciated werewolf movie that straddles this divide between uh, practical werewolf transformations and CGI heavy transformations. It begins uh, great and the practical work there, and you'll see this over and over again. We'll give the actors some uh, teeth, we'll give them a little bit of hair around their face, we'll give them their contact lenses and their claws and something to uh, to work with, this sort of halfway point of the transformation. And the actor can play around with this a lot and, and I always find it effective. But then in Bad Moon it descends as all 90s FX work seemed to into this nascent computer morphing technology that seemed to be mandatory for any FX sequence in, in the 90s. 
and we just descend into what now seems unfortunately like a sort of Microsoft Paint version of uh, transforming a man into a wolf. The Underworld movies have basically a much more polished version of exactly the same thing. We'll get some hair, some nails, some teeth, some contact lenses, and then we'll just uh, CG morph from a human body into the, the wolf form. I really like the look of the final wolf forms in these underworld movies, but the transformations are much more like Bruce Banner hulking out than uh, a human painfully turning into something of a different species. I mean, there's a reason for that in the Underworld movies. They need to get into their fights really quickly, but I think it's at the expense of the physicality and the pain of the change. You can see some of the actors trying to sell the pain of it, but it's over in such a flash that I, as a viewer, just don't buy it. But for these Underworld movies, they need to get into a scrap as quickly as possible. They can't spend all afternoon changing like Eddie Quist does in The Howling, or they'd just be shot by the vampires. The other end of that spectrum is Ginger Snaps, an amazing werewolf movie. Still seems fresh today, where the transformation takes place over the course of the movie as the full moon nears, you can see our protagonist, Ginger, becoming more and more lupine as the curse, the infection, the disease, however you want to map it, is wreaking its work on her body. Ginger Snaps manages to have its cake and eat it because you do get a fully physical transformation at the end from human into canine as well. I like the strangely fleshy quadruped that she turns into at the end. It does seem like a nice sort of brundle fly mushing of human and wolf, which really appeals to my sensibilities. Of course, we can't ignore our cinema history. No chat about werewolf transformations should ignore the great Jack Pierce, monster maker for Universal Studios in the 30s and 40s. He was responsible for the looks of Boris Carlos, Frankenstein creature, the mummy, and uh, the Wolfman. But before he got to transform Lon Chaney Jr. in the 40s, he worked on 1935's Werewolf of London and used a series of, I guess, hidden cuts as the character walked behind a series of pillars to, to phase the actor from uh, human through uh, different stages of the transformation into the final Wolfman form. In The Wolfman, uh, and I think the technique vastly improved upon in Frankenstein meets The Wolfman, cuts give way to dissolves to try and trick the eye into thinking that all this is happening right in front of you. It involves an extremely patient Long Chaney Jr. and the painstaking layering of makeup upon makeup upon makeup until we uh, can merge from human to wolf man. I can only imagine in 1941 what that must have seemed like to a virgin crowd. It must have been the height of movie making magic. 1981 truly was the year of the wolf, with not only the howling and an American werewolf in London, which you know I'm going to be talking about in a minute, but also Wolfen. And I needed to take a moment to mention the great Edward James Olmos in Wolfen, who does his transformation scene, or at least tries to get Albert Finney to buy that he's shape-shifting into a wolf without the aid of computer effects, practical special effects, optical effects, or even clothes, just running around in the nuddy, trying to convince someone that he's about to shapeshift into a wolf. That is 100% pure acting, and I didn't want to walk past it. But the two big hitters of any discussion about werewolf transformations are The Howling and An American Werewolf in London. The Howling 
sits, I think, in a, a similar sphere to a company of wolves. We have a plethora of transformations throughout that movie, um, including the one big Eddie Quist grandstanding one, and it's a chance for us to see different types of transformations. I'm a big fan of the lovemaking scene turned into werewolf transformation that beautifully segues from all the visual language of uh, sexy times and a sort of dreamy uh, eroticism into, into the way dreams can turn from dreams into nightmares just with the use of uh, music, lighting and editing basically. Spoiled a little at the end with the sort of hokey cartoon. The jewel in the crown of the howling transformation wise of course is Eddie Quist's transformation. Everything but the kitchen sink goes into this and while it looks fantastic within the context of the rest of the movie, the movie does just stop for a good few minutes and say right now look at this which in and of itself is fine except I can never get my head around why Dee Wallace doesn't just run out of the room. Eddie has to stand there and take a long, long time to transform. And within the context of this, something is just slightly off for me. Not so for the same approach in an American werewolf in London. So context is key here for me. David is on his own at night trying to sit out the night of the full moon when the transformation overtakes him and the film again says right now here's the portion of the film where we're going to have the werewolf transformation and the film again stops just as the howling does and we're going to have this big grandstanding special effects sequence but the amount of time it takes feeds back into the narrative and back into the performance. This is the thing we've been building to. It's the thing he doesn't want and it's painful and it's drawn out and it's horrifying as he turns from this nice young American boy into a slavering, deadly, murderous beast. The wonderful work that David Norton does with the prosthetics, the performance he is able to give means that when we finally see those yellow eyes open, we still see David Kessler's eyes. When after that point in the film, Norton is no longer in the film and it's just a huge monster puppet, I think his performance throughout the film and then finally passing the performance torch over to 100% puppetry and special effects after, during the transformation scene is strong enough and good enough that we still see David in the monster. But there are tons and tons and tons of excellent werewolf transformations out there. There will be loads that I will have uh, forgotten. There will be awful ones that I haven't mentioned that you might want to uh, talk about in the comments down below. So uh, please, thank you for watching. And if you want to join in the conversation down below, wolf out and get stuck in.